we've already discussed how central angles represent their intercepted arc. In this picture, angle ACB, which is a central angle, and the minor arc AB, which is the intercepted arc. Those are the two things we're looking at. So remember, the central angle and the intercepted arc are the same thing. As we go through the examples, we're going to be using the arcs and the angles to answer questions. In this question here, we know that we've got circle C. Remember in class I mentioned that it's really important that the circle, that we know that there is a diameter or a semicircle. We can't just assume that. So in this question, what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the angles that are here. We're trying to find angle ACB, angle DCA, angle DCB, and angle ECD, and angle ACE. So what we want to do is take a look at what we know about the arcs and the angles. The first arc that I know is 142. If arc AD is 142, then that means that angle ACD or DCA is 142 as well. I'm just going to put that in here. I also know arc BE is 88 degrees. That means that angle BCE right here is also 88 degrees. Now we can use that information to find the rest of the things that we need. To figure out the measure of angle ACB, I can do 180 minus 142 to get 38. And same thing on the other side. I know if DB is a diameter, I can do 180 minus 88 to get 92 right here. Now we have to do some combinations to get some of the other numbers that we have here. If we're trying to figure out angle ACE, for instance, ACE we would have to put together 38 and 88 to get our answer. Pretty basic question. The next problem that we have includes equations as a part of the central angles. In this problem, it tells me that the two arcs here, DE and AB, are the same. I'm highlighting them just so that I recognize that. In the problem, they tell us that arc AB is 10x plus 12, and that arc AD is 8x plus 6, and that DB is my diameter. With that in mind, I can write an equation to find the value of x and then find the value of the different angles. The equation that I can use to find x is 10x plus 12 plus 8x plus 6 equals 80. When I go through and do the steps to solve the equation, I end up with the answer that x equals 9. To find the missing angles, what I need to do is I need to plug 9 back into the problem. As well as you may notice that because these two arcs and angles here are the same, they're vertical angles, so that means that these two are also the same. So when I take a look up here, angle ACB, when I plug in my information, is going to be 78 degrees because 8 times 9 plus 6 is 78. That makes this angle here 78 degrees, and then it makes the two here 102 degrees. So central angles aren't super complicated, you just need to find the arcs and the angles. Last question. We're going to take this concept and extend it a little bit um, tomorrow, but I want to make sure we have an idea right now. In this problem, circle zero, circle, um, oh, excuse me, circumscribes regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. As a little reminder, in a regular hexagon, a few things are true. In a regular, of any kind of polygon, these are true. The sides are all the same, so it's equilateral. The exterior angles, such as angle A, B, C, all of those are also the same, so that's equiangular, but there are also a set of angles in the inside, if you notice. We call those central angles as well. So if I have an inscribed regular hexagon, I can actually find all of the central angles by taking the degrees in the circle, which is 360, and dividing it by how many triangles make up that shape, which is also how many sides there are. So 360 divided by 6 gives me 60. You can apply this to an inscribed pentagon, you can apply it to several different types of questions.